Hello everybody, I'm Inverse and you're watching another Company of Heroes Online first person video cast. Today we got a game on Angleville against Hermatheus, a high level Blitzkrieg player who also happens to be the 26th overall 1v1 Blitz player on the leaderboards at the time of this recording. Sorry for the delay in getting this fifth episode out the door, I've had a lot of schoolwork going on and I also broke my mic which wasn't a very fun experience but I did get a new mic it's not as good as my old ones so if you notice any static or any background noise I apologize in advance I'm, just, I'm gonna have to wait until December to get my old mic back so I'm gonna have to stick with this for the time being issuing capping orders here right now building my barracks in the normal spot I usually build it on on the south, not all the way up, not as far up as possible because then MGs can't, your base MGs can't defend it. Of course, if you put it too far back, you don't get the bonuses or the the shorter travel time of putting that barracks up a little forward. Always want to try to put it up as forward as possible. You noticed, I don't think I'll do it again. I might, when I opened the tactical map and issued my capping orders, I issued movement orders near the fuel points after I issued the capping orders. This is because if my opponent rushes those fuel points and starts capping them before my squad heads over there, my squad's just going to skip that point and go on to the next point in the queue. I always want my squads to move to the fuel points even if my opponent's capping them because there's a pretty good chance my engineers can beat his pioneers one-on-one -on -one early game. So so I always try to make sure my squads are moving to the points I want them to capture even if they're not going to capture them right away because I'll be able to micro them into cover. Hopefully force a retreat on my opponents capping squads. What I'm doing right now, sending my rifle squad to the right hand side. This is my typical capping order on Angleville. Sending my two engineers to both sides, send the rifle squad to link up the right hand side. And now what I'm doing is trying to see if he has any tier 1 units on the field yet. I don't think he does, that's why I'm going to move over here. You heard the hero sound a few seconds ago. That was pretty late and it was at a weird time, so it probably isn't Katzenmeyer's Volks unless he went a bike first. Meaning it's either... It's probably close combat Volks Grenadiers, I'm not sure. Of course, at this point in the game, I have no real idea because that was a very odd timing on his on his hero. Usually if you hear a hero sound the moment or just around when your first rifle squad comes out, it means your opponent went Katzenmeyer's first. Of course, his was far more delayed and as you see right now, he did go close combat bolt first. It's an interesting idea, however, it's difficult to retain map control and to gain map control rather early game as a Vedmox player when you go close combat first because they take a, a minute to build. Regular Volks Grenadiers only take 30 seconds. Microing over there to kill the Pioneers. Right over here I'm getting in the Pioneers retreat path. This way if they manage to cap the point they're gonna die because they're gonna have to retreat through my rifles. Of course I managed to kill them just before they finish capping the point which is too bad for my opponent he's gonna have to send his close combats over there to finish the job or else risk wasting all that time he spent getting that cap up a little bit I'm gonna try to kill this pile on the right hand side but I'm not gonna be able to so I'm just going to have to let him decap the point I'm gonna cap it back myself his MG forced a retreat on the left, which is good of him. He does have a Fatherland MG on the field right now, which is the MG you saw a while ago. However, it's only VET 4, which means it doesn't gain the ridiculously overpowered speed bonus of VET 5 Fatherland MGs, which is good for me. I'm feeling a little better about that right now. Also, realize my... The moment the load screen popped up and I noticed this guy had level 3 Volks Grenadier health upgrades and a lot of Volks upgrades, a lot of tier 1 army items, I had it in my head I was going to be going fast M8. Bars are really, really... Oh, lost an engineer squad on the right. Good job, Inverse. Anyways, the reason I decided early on I'd be going for an M8 is because a good Wehrmacht tier 1 with army items is incredibly difficult to crack bars 
aren't necessarily what's going on. Microphone's messing up. Alright, we're good. Bars aren't necessarily the best idea because if your opponent can hold you off with good MG micro and crazy high health on his Volks, you're going to be in serious trouble. We'll be able to rush tier 3 if you can control enough fuel, and I haven't controlled enough fuel myself to make me feel like tier or bars, sorry, would be the best option. What you see me doing right now is I know he has an MG and a couple Volk squads on the left. I don't want to get my flamer suppressed, so I'm trying to bait him into res into picking up his MG and trying to set it up somewhere. I'm going to decap this point, the strap point on the left, because if I flank, even if the flank isn't successful, he'll be cut off from his resources the entirety of the time. And if I can drag the flank on a little bit, That'll be a lot of resources he's missing out on. See me right there. I backed up my squads on the right. I am going to retreat that one right squad right now. And now I'm going to move my other two squads on the right in. I noticed him pack up or unset up, which is a big mistake by him right there because it allowed me to move those two squads. And I'm going to be able to move my other rifle squad a little to the bottom in as well once I set those, those two squads to avoid the assault grenades. Little tip about assault grenades, Volks, or close combat Volks grenades, whatever you want to call them. If you micro straight back the moment you see the animation, you're not gonna, your opponent isn't gonna get much use out of them because you're gonna be able to dodge every single one of them as long as none of your riflemen do something stupid. And if your opponent wants to engage a flanking squad or something like that, he needs to move his his Volks which means it cancels the ability and unlike regular grenades close combat Volks assault grenades grenades like that the moment you activate the ability it subtracts the 50 munitions from your munitions inventory if you cancel the ability you don't get them back unlike regular grenades where as long as you don't throw the grenade you'll always get the munitions back if you cancel it by moving that's another good thing to good thing to try you can do that with any of the any of the tier one heroes that come with grenades. If your opponent, you've noticed, is good at dodging grenades or pays attention to the grenade throw animation, you can tell a squad to throw a grenade. You'll do the grenade throw animation, and right before you actually throw the grenade, issue a move order. That way the grenade will get cancelled, your opponent will think you've thrown a grenade and micro away from the grenade, which usually means he'll be microing out of cover and give you a better chance at engaging because he won't have the benefits of cover anymore. And he'll be on the move, meaning he will not shoot, he will not be as accurate, and you will have more accuracy against him. Right now I'm feeling alright, he doesn't have much fuel, I cut him off a lot on the left hand side, I just cap back the left hand side fuel, I am capping back the right hand side fuel and I'm also supporting it with another rifle squad in cover, that way this Volk squad, especially since he's charging through an open field, isn't going to do much, I actually take out two men really quickly without losing anything of my own, which was extremely lucky as you do see my motor pool coming up. My motor pool has been pretty delayed, however, you've if you've been paying attention to my manpower throughout this game you'll notice I've been floating a lot the reason for this is I haven't really been forced to flank heavily it was only really that one big flank the rest have been small engagements and I haven't really lost very much early game it's not too too bad as long as you have your four riflemen and your two engineers it's not too bad to float manpower dodging a grenade luckily that last rifleman decided hey I'm gonna chill over here and not get hit by the grenade which is very smart of him getting a minesweeper as well because whenever you go fast vehicles as Wehrmacht or Americans always a good idea to get a minesweeper mines are deadly against pumas they're deadly against M8s especially if you hit one before the skirts upgrade which is extremely annoying and not very good I'm accidentally upgrading a second minesweeper but I'm gonna realize wait a minute I have a minesweeper right there so I'm gonna cancel that or at least I should cancel it yep there we go and maybe get a flamer yeah I'll get, I'll get a flamer because I have a hundred munitions which is just enough for both the upgrades on the M8 and crawlbug yes my Wilsons were crawlbug which made me a very sad panda 